Alright, so in this video, we'll solve some free-falling body problems, but we're going to solve them differently than using the actual equations. We're going to solve these ones through graphal, graphic uh, interpretation. So for the first example, let's say we have some castle here, and on top of the castle is a guy, and he's dropping a stone. And when I say drop, he's dropping a stone, I mean to say that his initial velocity, that the initial velocity of the stone is zero meters a second. Alright, and let's say he drops this stone from a height, let's say 15 meters. So he drops the stone from a height of 15 meters and our question is, A, how long does it take? So how long does it take for that stone to reach the ground? And B, what is the final velocity? All right. <clears throat> so first, let's look at it. We know that gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, but we're going to call that 10 meters per second squared to make the numbers a little bit easier to work with. And this is constant. This is a constant acceleration. So if we graph that, we have g here, which is 9.8. This is our acceleration to time graph. Here's some point at t. And this is constant, so it goes out like that. And the area underneath this interval is going to be the change in velocity. All right. And since we know that, we also know that we plot the velocity to time graph and the initial velocity is zero to some final velocity at some point in time, some final velocity at some point in time. And this is going to be linear since this is constant. The area in this interval is going to be equal to the displacement, how much that <coughs> object has moved. Well, the area of this triangle here is one half so the area of the triangle is one half base times height the area of the triangle is equal to the displacement so we'll write displacement is equal to one half the base is t minus zero which is t one half t and the height is vf minus zero so the height is the final velocity, or the change in velocity, since the initial velocity is zero, we'll just call it Vf. Now if you look over here, change in velocity here, well this area of the rectangle is t times g. So, and since the initial velocity was zero, this is equivalent to Vf is equal to t times g. So we could plug that in here, and we get the change, the displacement is equal to one half g t squared. t times t is t squared. All right. So we know, we know the displacement is 15 meters since this is how much is being displaced, it's 15 meters. So we'll write that in here, we'll squeeze it right in here, 15 meters. And this is equal to one half gravity, which is 10 meters a second. And just so you know, we're gonna call this zero, and this is 15, so everything down is positive, so we can work with all positives. I could set my origin where this is zero, and up here is 15, and then it would be all negatives. So I mean, wherever you set the your origin will make the difference of whether you attach the negative to the acceleration. Well anyway, 
we have 15 meters is equal to 1 half g, which is 5 meters a second squared, times t squared. 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3 seconds squared, which is t squared. So t is equal to, we're going to only take the positive value, and square root of 3 is about like 1.73. So the time it takes to drop 15 meters is 1.73 seconds. And remember, we just calculated that, not even with equations, just the understanding that the acceleration is constant. So we have this here, the relationship of the area, and uh, how that how the constant acceleration makes a linear velocity, and then how the, the area under the velocity graph, the curve, is displacement. Using that information, you could actually solve for time in this manner. So now we have the time. And since we have the time, we can now determine the change in velocity. So, remember, the change in velocity is equal to time times gravity. Well, so the change in velocity is equal to 1.73 seconds times gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. Seconds cancel there. And you're left with 17.3 meters per second. So that's the change in velocity, so the final velocity minus initial. Well, the initial is zero, so this is the final velocity. The final velocity is 17.3 meters a second. Notice, though, if I made, let me put, get this in red, if I made this zero and this 15, this would be a decreasing. Uh, the numbers would be decreasing, so the velocity in that case would be negative 17.3. So depending on where you set your origin may affect or will affect um, the sign attached to, attached to your velocity. Remember the sign to the velocity, the sign that's attached, whether it's plus or minus, this is telling you the direction. Alright, so let's do another example. All right, for the second problem, imagine that you have that same guy, and he's on his 15 meter castle here, and he's throwing a stone this time, and he's throwing that stone down at 10 meters a second. Now notice over here, on the left here, that I set my origin at this guy here, and it's zero meters, and a lot of people will set this as negative 15, but for this, we'll just make it 15 meters, because in a sense, all I'm gonna really want here is the uh, magnitude of your final velocity. I just want to know what the magnitude is and I want to know how long it takes for that to hit the ground. So we'll just do it like this so we can use positive values for our acceleration since the acceleration will increase velocity in this positive direction. Alright, so gravity once again is 9.8 meters per second squared which we will use 10 meters a second squared for this for this problem. Now acceleration is constant, so here's our acceleration with time graph, acceleration is constant, and then here we have our change in velocity, and over here, since acceleration is constant, our velocity is linear, and this time it has an initial velocity, so we'll draw it like this, so that you have vi here, your initial velocity, and it goes up to your final in some range of time. And this one will be this area, VIT, plus this area, plus one half T, change in V, VF minus VI. Change in V is this area here, which is AT. So I could plug that in there. And remember, this area is displacement. So I get displacement is equal to VIT plus one half a t squared a acceleration is g here it's 10 meters per second squared uh, displacement is 15 meters initial velocity is 10 meters a second so plugging all that in we get I'll do it right up here so we get 15 meters is equal to 10 meters a second times t plus one half of 10 meters a second squared so 5 meters per second squared times t squared. 
Now, you should notice that this here is quadratic, which makes sense since it's our position. But we can subtract 5 from each side and solve for t, or subtract 15. So what we'll do is 5t squared plus 10t minus 15 is equal to 0. All I did was subtract 15 meters from each side. All right. Um, let's see, we can divide everything by 5. So t squared plus 2t minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's see, if we unfoil that, we get t plus 3, t minus 1 is equal to 0. That means for a, a t is equal to negative 3 or t is equal to 1. We don't want the negative value, so we'll take the positive. So it takes one second, one second, for the stone to hit the ground. Now, if it takes one second, all we do is come back to our acceleration graph. We put in one second, because that's the elapsed time, right? So how long does it take? One second. So that's the elapsed time. Now we want to know what is final velocity. We know the initial, so we know that change in v is equal to the final velocity minus 10 meters a second, the initial. So it's going to be change in velocity is equal to 10 meters per second squared times one second or 10 meters a second. So we plug that in for change in V here. And when you solve for V for VF, you get VF is equal to, let me get a different color, the final velocity, well in this sense we'll just call it the magnitude of the final velocity, is equal to 20 meters per second. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm going to continue to post more videos on simple problems like these and unique ways to solve them. Try to take something that a lot of students find confusing and challenging and show it as simple common sense and something that is very easy to do. But thanks for watching.